I'm Emma Jennings and I'm a local artist. I have my studio here in my art gallery in Olinda and I'm going to show you some simple things you can do at home to make something beautiful on a piece of wood reclaimed from the storm using materials from the forest. I'm going to show you some simple ways to capture the texture on this piece of wood. There's lots of beautiful patterns in the forest. So I've cut this piece of paper to size. You can use any type of paper you like. You might like to cut the paper all the way to the edge or it could go around the sides. I'd really like to see some of this wood grain, so I've chosen to cut it a little bit smaller than this block of wood. But what I'm going to actually do is a beautiful rubbing on this log. You can see the chainsaw marks in it, but also the rings of the tree. And I've obviously done some painting on this before. I'm going to focus on this circle here in the middle. And I'm sure all of you will have some kind of crayon at home. This is oil pastel. And I'm just going to do, just go right over the top. And it's a beautiful way to pick up the textures in the wood. You could use leaves or bark. You could go for a walk in the forest and put it over some of the trees or branches. And what I might do now, I've collected from the root balls. I'm going to squash it up. This is a really lovely process. There's just something beautiful about having the dirt in your hands. A little bit of water. Look at the colour, isn't it gorgeous? And you can make a decision here about how wet you want it, how chunky. You could grind it down with a mortar and pestle and make it really fine. You could put it through a sieve. I'm going to see what this looks like when I go over the top. Because I've used oil pastel, it's actually resisting the water. So what we will see is the pattern coming through from the pastel. And then we'll let that dry. So this is dry now. Um, I cheated and used a hairdryer, but obviously you could go and stick it out in the sun if you like. I thought I'd show you this, exactly the same technique, just with some charcoal. And you can see the difference. Depends what sort of colours you're drawn to. And now we'll go on to the next stage. So once your paper's reasonably dry, you can have a think about what to do next with it. I like adding another layer, which is usually pattern. And I get those patterns from looking closely at the things I find in the forest. So it could be leaves or seed pods, lichen. And if you just spend some time looking, what you'll do is you'll notice things that maybe you haven't noticed before. It might be the colours, it could be the textures, it could be the bits that have snapped off from the tree. You might start to find that there's a pattern that interests you. And this is where the drawing can be really fun because you don't need any experience to do this. And what I really like is these little shapes here. So I'm just going to concentrate on those. And if you've got a sketchbook or some scrap paper at home, you could just do a little drawing. I'm just going to have a look at what I can do with my pencil to find the shapes and see how this little collection of seed pods grows. So obviously we're not aiming for a highly detailed botanical illustration here. What I'm going to do is simplify it. So obviously we start with a stick and in nature things aren't usually straight but it could be fun to think about what we can do with this shape to make it a little bit easier for you to draw with. Our eyes tend to like pattern and repetition. Maybe I'm going to put it in more of a grid shape. The other thing that could be fun is if I put it into a circle, because we started with a circle in the middle of the tree. So perhaps there's a circle and those little shapes are inside the circle and you could end up with something like that. So have a think, you could do all sorts of drawings like this and when you feel like you've got something you're happy with then you can move on to the next stage. So depending on the colours you've used and the materials you have at home that will determine obviously what you put over the top. Sometimes it's nice to think about the colours being consistent, so simple tones of the same thing. I really like using metallic paint, 
but obviously this could be anything at all. I've got some metallic bronze in here. This is stuff you can just get from any art supply store. It's not expensive. So if I add a bit of water to it, just to get the right consistency, I'm going to go back to my sketchbook and see how this looks, if I've got the right size brush or not, because we might need to also change the brushes. What sort of line do I get with this brush? Can I get that detail? And you can play around with different colours. This is where you can, you can um, do some experimenting on your, on your sketchbook page. A smaller brush is obviously going to help you get some finer detail. So it's up to you how fine you want these shapes to be. And I've just realised because these lines are quite vertical, I'm going to see what it looks like to turn this around because we've got the grain of the wood running this way. So I think I might start on this final piece now. I'm going to start just with the downward strokes and I'm just going to place them randomly throughout the page. I'm going to let the fibres of the paper and the blue marks dictate where I go with this because the paper's still a little bit wet, it's bleeding into it which creates a really lovely soft edge to everything. Now you can see this paper's still a little bit wet, so we're getting a lot of bleeding as part of the process. But if you'd like a crisper edge, then obviously you need to wait for your paper to be completely dry. Usually <laughs> my work's a lot neater than this and I do like a crisp edge. But this is also a fun way to just be really loose with the process and enjoy it. So that pattern's done, but I feel like it still needs something more. So I'm actually going to come back to my branch and I'm going to do some big sweeping branch shapes over the top. I'm going to add quite a bit more water and a bigger brush as well helps. Now, make sure you look at how the branch grows. It's thicker at the bottom, there's little segments, and then they branch off and get thinner and thinner and thinner. And that's what you can do really simply with a brush. And you drag it up this way and put more pressure at the beginning where it's thick and then lighten it while you change direction. So that's a really simple way. I'm very using my wrist very lightly and just twirling and twisting and pulling up with the brush. And that's a nice way to get some lovely organic looking branches. And then you can come back in and add some of the little imperfections. You can thicken up the paint if you want it to be darker in some sections. I'm going to start down here. Right. Okay, now for the fun bit, I'm going to show you how to do some leaves. So see how the difference when you add more water? You want to load your brush up, that means you're going to fill it with lots of, lots of paper and water. And we're going to do a really big, full twist of the, of the brush like this. And we're going to just push that water around and pull it at the end and you get that really lovely tip of the leaf. And you get some leaves are curling at the end, so look closely at what these leaves are doing. So let's see how that looks. So I'm looking at these little stems coming off. So don't forget the stem, and then we're going to go... You don't obviously need to paint every single leaf. Just enough to give the impression of what this beautiful branch is doing. And I'm going to add another branch in another colour. I'm going to add some of this red ochre from Root Balls. All right, so let's see what this colour looks like. If I can get a similar result. Yeah, that looks lovely. OK, 
Okay, we'll do some big leaves as well over the top of that. It might not be dark enough, but we'll see what happens. And I'm going to change direction because obviously nothing grows straight in the forest. We're going to go with quite a thick brush and a thick branch now. I'm going to go right across this way. And maybe it comes up here. It might be all it needs. One last little thing. I'm just going to redo some of these little lines in this colour now and just feel like it needs some of this beautiful red in here. Let's see how it looks on the wood. So once that dry, the last thing is to glue it down and then you're done. And this has ended up a little bit different to what I expected, which is always really exciting. Just allow the ideas to evolve as they go.